Hi, this is Steel from Pugablocks.com. For this week's fountain pen review, I'm going to show you this Duke fountain pen, model number 209. This is a very affordable fountain pen. I bought this on eBay. I cannot remember the exact price, but I only remember that it's very affordable. So it's a good pen. If you are a beginner, you want something cheap to try out, this could be it. This body, I think it's made of steel or aluminum. It's not um, particularly, how should I say, high gloss, but it is definitely very well polished and it's very slippery. And that is also one of the main complaints for this particular pen. It's, it can be very slippery, which is why I went ahead to use the sandpaper to polish up the body because it's so cheap I don't feel any heartache when I use the sandpaper to polish the body but it does not help it's still quite slippery so I tend to grip this pen a bit uh, tighter than other fountain pens the pen also comes with other colors like black your typical fountain pen color this is quite a small pen it has a good weight so let's check out the nib The Duke 209 comes with different nibs. This particular one is the Fude nib. A Fude nib is a nib that is bent at the end. So you can see this gentle curve here. This is very nice because it writes on the paper quite smoothly. Also the edges of the nib are also, they are also a little bit beveled. So they are also very smooth. It's not sharp and that really helps with the pen's smoothness. This is the design of the nib on top, 22K GP. And as you can see, it's quite glossy. This is my camera and I'm sitting behind the camera. So there's not much of a grip. And because of that, it's um, quite slippery. Together with the body, which is slippery, the grip is also a bit slippery. So you need to hold this pen pretty tight in order not to drop it. Let's draw something. Let me fill up the ink first. The pen comes with a converter. Um, this type the plunger type converter. So just put it inside and take it out. And let me clean this up first before I start drawing. This is a fully neat pen so it is capable of giving you thin and thick lines. Let me demonstrate that. Let's zoom in a bit closer so you can see clearly. It depends on the angle you're holding the pen. If you hold it vertically, it will give you the thin lines. And if you hold it uh, more towards the paper, it will give you the thick lines. And the variation, as you can see, is quite significant. So depending on how you hold the pen, it will give you thin or thick or thin or thick. You can control it quite easily, but usually I do not pay attention to how I control it. So if I'm just drawing as per normal, it will also give me that variation. So that's the nice thing about this particular pen. Let's say I'm going to draw a circle like this. So for some part, you can see that it's thin here, and then it goes to thick, some parts tapers down and then thick and tapers down again. There's no um, so, so called pattern to it and which is very nice. Let me draw a person. Let's do some drawing demonstration. The ink flow for this pen is very good and it's also very smooth on the paper. That's why I like this pen very much, so it's really worth the money, especially because this is quite an affordable pen. I'm sorry, I don't know the exact price, cannot remember. So if you do very fast strokes, you'll get the sort of a dry ink stroke effect, like this. If you do slower, then you'll be able to get the sharp edges to your lines and because the broad tip is pretty white you can use it to color but you should color slowly because um, 
If not, you will get the dry brush or dry stroke effect. So that's something to take note of. If you want quick sketching, quick sketching, um, I think it's pretty good. The ink flows really pretty well. And as you can see, the variation that it gives really makes the sketch more um, interesting. And I did not actually pay any attention to how I'm using the pen. I'm just drawing as per normal as I would with any other pen. So um, this person is wearing a jacket. So for these darker areas, I want to give it thicker lines. And then the fingers, I'm just going to anyhow draw them quickly for this demonstration. The ink actually doesn't, what ink am I using? This is, um, this is the Noodleless Polar Black. It's not waterproof, so I will not use this with watercolor. But um, because the pen puts out quite a lot of ink, if I want to use watercolor on, on it, I would wait for the ink to dry, and I will use the bulletproof black instead of polar black. So if I want a thick line for the back of the guy, I can do so. So it's really a very fun pen to use. Let me draw the pocket of this guy. Okay. Let me do some hatching. This pen is quite good for hatching as well. So you just tilt the pen upwards and you can hatch it. It's quite easy. So this is it, this is the drawing. So I use a variation of lines here. Uh, and you can see this is the thick line, and then we have thin, and the thick, thin. Some parts actually look like they are drawing off, so it gives that additional variation. Very nice. And I also use the shading here for the black hair. Fast strokes here give you the drying out effect, and then a thin lines here as well. And thin, here we have thick, thin, thick, thin, and some blobs and stuff like that. The pen cap also clicks on quite nicely, and overall, it's just a very nice pen. It's well worth the money. You can buy this pen um, with the foodie nib alone, or you can buy it with the standard nib alone, or you can buy two nibs with one pen body. I will post a link to where you can buy them in the video description below, so you can check that out. That's all for my review today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section. And if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, do so for more fountain pen, art product reviews, sketching tips and techniques, and also art books, sketchbook features. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. See you next time. Bye.